What's going on, beautiful people? It's Ride with Inspire the Journey, as if you don't know. So welcome to episode two of chapter three. And it's titled, um, Downfall of My Hero. Like I've said uh, in other videos, I've had a handful of heroes in my life, um, but this one is related to my freshman year of high school and you know my life. He was one of my biggest heroes, um, besides my parents. Um, so this episode is dedicated to my, my grandfather, uh, my papa, Joseph Powers. I haven't been here in um, 10 years, at least. And someday my Mimi will be here, hopefully not for a long time. And then um, here's my Uncle Bobby. My Uncle Bobby's here too. Um, so towards the end of my freshman year of high school, um, I know this is only episode two, but I have to jump and, and get this out because this is why it's taken so long to do chapter three. This is going to be longer than six minutes, so sorry if that irritates anybody. So towards the end of my freshman year of high school, um, my grandfather wasn't doing very well in the nursing home. He had um, issues with his leg, circulation issues where his leg got infected. And the only way that he was going to be able to live long, longer was if they amputated his leg. So um, I was in the exploratory shop, Machine Tech, when this was happening. Um, a couple days after I found out he was having the operation, I was called to the office for dismissal. And um, I didn't know why. And I found out that there was a problem with the surgery. His body didn't take it. And um, my grandfather was dying. He was in a coma, um, medical induced coma, um, I believe. And um, I remember walking in that room and he was like, he was whispering. He was unconscious, um, but he was, he was whispering something. And um, I remember my mom was pregnant with my baby sister, Alyssa, at the time. Um, Remember, even though he was out of it, I remember he touched her stomach and he, he, he whispered something. He knew. He knew she was there. And um, he managed to be able to hang on up until my last uncle got out here from Georgia before he passed away. He held on. And, um, this is a hard subject to talk about, clearly. I'm not doing very well keeping my composure. Sorry if I just overloaded the microphone. Um, but this episode is very important. Um, I talked to somebody this last weekend that just passed um, who's taking out certain things on herself um, a similar way that I did after I lost my, my grandfather. Um, something I've never told anybody. Um, so I didn't really know how to express my emotions very well uh, for a long time. Sometimes I still don't that well. But freshman year, was especially hard because right after I lost my grandfather, I had to go back into school. And um, I had to go right back. It was like only a couple days I had off of school. I had to go back and um, I was uh, I was still picked on. And uh, mentally, emotionally wise, I, I wasn't that stable. I really wasn't. I kept, I kept a lot of things in. And, um, the pain that I felt inside of me, I did something that, um, you know, I can't believe I did. I don't like to say, but I cut myself. Um, it wasn't to die. Don't think that it wasn't for attention. It was, uh, a way to try to get a, a, a release of my emotions in, um, yeah, it was a temporary release. If anybody out there is cutting yourselves, you guys need to understand there's only one way to be able to deal with your emotions like that, and it's verbal. Cutting yourself is not going to help you. The only thing it's going to do is keep you guys secluded from people. Some people see cut marks on someone's arm. You get judged automatically. People won't want to interact with you. I'm telling you right now, if you're cutting yourself, stop. The one way you're going to feel better is by finding the right person to talk to. I wish I knew that when I was young. I didn't just cut a line on myself. Um, I had a bunk bed with my little brother when I was in high school, when I was in freshman year. 
I had the top bunk and I can specifically remember um, my little brother watching TV and I was up in my bunk bed um, with the safety pin and I was carving a harder gram onto my wrist. I'm holding my stupid selfie stick so you guys can't see. But where it says 1832 down towards the end and where it says Mimi, um, I carved a harder gram there. It wasn't deep, but it was uh, deep enough to bleed. And um, immediately the day after that, I did that. Um, I, wore, I put a sweatband over it and some kids in my shop, uh, the older kids, the juniors, um, remember a couple of them found out that I did that and I was called a uh, suicidal faggot, um, emo faggot. It was tortured called Simple Plan over and over and over because I was listening to Simple Plan a lot because I didn't know how to deal with my emotions I was going through. Um, I hope you guys don't get a wrong impression of me. This is something I've never told anybody before. I don't think I've ever told anybody. And if I did, it was a very long time ago. Um, so the person I was referring to that I met over this last weekend, um, I hope you stop. I hope you find a healthy way to express what you're going through, how you're feeling. Talk to me. You opened up to me a bit. And I hope you keep doing that. Let that butterfly live. You're the only person that's going to watch us that's going to know what that means. Let that butterfly live. Our lives are so short on this earth. We should not be dealing with emotions like that. There are healthy ways. And then there are un unhealthy ways. I stuttered. I'm perfect. I don't have much more to say. Um, so this actually wasn't much longer than five more minutes than five minutes. Um, you know, it's a relief actually talking about, um, you know, kind of how I felt when I lost my grandpa and um, the wrong way I dealt with it. I really, really, really hope you kids um, don't do that kind of stuff. You're only going to get negative attention. If you want positive attention, please open up your heart, your mind, your spirit, your mouth. Open up your mouth. I don't mean rant and rave about things, but talk. Talk. I don't mean even a doctor. Talk to somebody like me. Somebody that has understood what it's like to be in a similar situation that you're in. By all means, I'm not, I'm not Jesus. I'm just not. I'm just a guy with a bad beard walking around in a graveyard right now. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, it's going to be a little while until I do the next one because it's also something hard to talk about. And it's going to be uh, titled um, Shattered Dream. Shattered Dream. Um, I'm going to upload episode one and two back to back. And then that's when I'm going to be taking my break um, to get a lot more stuff situated. I just really wanted to get these two episodes out. Mainly because it's uh, early November, it's going to be getting cold soon, and I wanted to make sure that I showed where my grandfather's resting place is here. So, God bless, take care, and I love you all. I hope you're healthy and safe and happy in uh, making the best decisions in your lives. So, take care. Peace.